Today we looked at patterning, and in order to introduce the topic, we looked at a video of some toothpicks forming the patterns um, displayed here. Figure one was four toothpicks. Figure two was larger and gave us eight toothpicks. Figure three, larger still, a three by three, which gave us 12 total toothpicks. And then we were required to show what we thought figure four would look like. At this point, we had students in the class make some predictions for figure six and figure 11. Lots of folks were picking 24 for figure six, and a lot of folks were picking 44 for figure 11. We then took our information, our figure number being the independent variable and our dependent variable being the number of toothpicks, and we tabulated them in a table and followed it up with a graph, noting that our independent causes the dependent to change. Independent on the x-axis, dependent on the y-axis. And we can see here, because we are going up by a constant rate of 4, that we get a straight line, a perfectly linear relationship. And we can see in our table that some folks had guessed right on with their prediction of 24 toothpicks for the sixth figure. Um, however, we can't necessarily see figure number 11 yet. So we're going to do a little bit of work with this in just a moment. Now, because this pattern is proportional, we can use some of the same skills, including equivalent fractions or proportions that we've used in some previous activities this past week. If we consider a unit rate here, for every figure, we increase our number of toothpicks by four. So our unit rate is four toothpicks for that first figure. Using some of our skills from our baby beats problem, as well as our other patterning problems we've looked at, we can try to find out our multiplier in order to figure out mathematically or proportionally how many toothpicks we should expect for figure number six. Since six divided by one is equal to six, we know that the number of toothpicks should increase by six as well or sorry, should be a multiple of six. And we can, we can use a similar strategy in order to find figure number 11. Since 11 divided by six is 1.83 repeated, we'll do the same to our 24 toothpicks and multiply them by 1.83 repeated. And we get 44 toothpicks. Note that we can do the same thing by using our original unit rate, multiplying figure 1 by 11 and 4 toothpicks by 11, and we get 44 toothpicks for figure 11. As a decimal, we can simplify our unit rate, and we'll get 4. And as a percent, that would be 400 out of 100, 400%. Again, using a percent in this context probably isn't necessary or, um, real, or realistic for use in the real world. However, I think it's always important that we understand that a percent is just out of 100. Question number two asks us to describe and classify the relationship. So looking back to the graph, we can see that because it is going up to the right, we would say that this is an increasing graph. It is rising to the right. It's also perfect. Some would say strong, but in this case, it's a perfect linear relationship. And it is a positive relationship. Question number three ask us, asks us to create an equation, an algebraic equation, that will relate the number of toothpicks for any figure number. 
I typically look at the table. However, you can do this from, from the graph or even just from using a little bit of, uh, of logic. But I like to look and try to pick out the pattern in the table. So what we do is find the first differences. And the first differences essentially focus on looking at your uh, y values, in this case the number of toothpicks, and seeing what the pattern is. What does the number of toothpicks go up or down by? So in this case, if we look at 4 and 8, it goes up by 4. And we can continue this pattern on, and we'll notice that it goes up by 4 each and every time in this table. Now we should also notice that the figure number is going up by a constant value as well. Ultimately going up by one each time is what we're looking for. And that four is a magic number that's going to help us create our equation. Our equation will always begin with the dependent variable because that's essentially the, the solution we're looking for. So for figure one, we want to know how many toothpicks. So that's the answer we're looking for. So that's how we're going to start our equation. So we'll start it with a big capital T and we'll set that equal to, in this case, four toothpicks for every figure number. And if we test some values, for example, um, let's focus on figure number three. If we sub in figure number three for F, we should ultimately get a total of 12 toothpicks. So let's try that out. Now keeping in mind again, F is our figure number, three is our number for our figure number that we're looking for, and when we multiply those two, four times three, our toothpicks is a total of 12. And that's exactly what we're looking for in this table. We can try this again with another value. So for example, let's say um, 4 times figure 11. And in this case, we'll get 44 toothpicks. So we can tell that this equation definitely works for any figure number. So our final question is asking us to find how many toothpicks we'd need to build figure 427. So we have our equation again with figure number 427. We end up with a total of 1,708 toothpicks. So that means ultimately if we were to carry continue our table on, we'd eventually see figure number 427, and we would have 1,708 toothpicks in total.